All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, so today, what we're going to be doing is adding on to our Candy Shop Go application. For those of you who haven't seen my previous videos, I would recommend go checking those out. Uh, not totally necessary, but very helpful. Um, what we're going to be doing in this video is just adding a post endpoint that basically interacts with our uh, Cassandra uh, instance that's running locally and saves our candy into our database. So let's begin. First things first, uh, create adding package. This is going to have a service.go file. And before I forget, package adding and also a candy.go file. Same thing, package adding. Inside of this candy file, we're going to have a struct of candy. It's going to have an ID of string, category of string, name of string, and price of float 32. And just to make sure I got that all right let's do a quick select all oops the candies here we go okay that all looks right now these are candies that we manually added so that's what our post endpoint is for uh, next thing what we want to do is pass in these uh, these tags, these JSON tags that basically allow us to serialize and deserialize uh, Golang structs and JSON objects uh, to and from. Uh, first, first one we're gonna do is ID, category, name, and price. And up here, uh, over by ID, we're going to want to omit empty just because we want to handle the ID creation on our end on the API and not leave it up to the front end. Now next, uh, our service.go file is basically going to be like our service.go file inside of our reading package, uh, except slightly different. So we can just go ahead and copy that over. It's gonna have our repository interface, service interface, service struct, and a new service function that returns us this service struct with the repository interface as its variable. So now um, let's go and delete this. What we're going to call this is add candy, and it's going to take in a type of candy and it's going to return a string in there so that's the right signature for both repository and service so make sure that's all correct um, next thing we want to do is create a function called uh, first off it takes in a receiver of service and the function is going to be the same as this signature up here so we'll copy and paste that just to make sure everything is spelled right. Now, next thing you want to do is, what are we gonna do? We're going to return an ID and an error from the uh, repository whenever we save it into the database. Okay, so make sure you guys do s.r dot add candy because when I was running through this before this video I actually forgot the R and um, whenever I hit the endpoint I was stuck in an infinite loop and I couldn't figure out why until I went through uh, all my code and uh, saw this so yeah uh, we're gonna pass in C which we actually need to declare here for this add candy and basically if error um, not equal to nil 
We're going to return empty string and the error. And if everything's fine, we're going to return the ID and nil. Simple as that. That's it for our service uh, file and our adding package. Next thing we want to do is set up the function for our repository. So storage, we're going to create a new file called adding.go. And this is part of the uh, storage package. And we're just going to have one function here right, right now. And it's going to be part of the storage receiver. Or it's going to have a storage receiver. And it's going to be called add candy just like we did. There we go. And instead of candy here, we're going to do C. And since we're no longer inside of the adding package, we're going to have to do adding.candy. Okay. So this function here is where we actually interact with our Cassandra database. Um, if you haven't, if you don't have it set up already, I would recommend go checking out my previous videos. But basically, this is how we're doing it here. We have the storage object that has a DB, which is our Cassandra, and this is where we can pass in our queries. So we're going to do insert into our candies and then pass in the call names. It's going to be candy ID, uh, category, name, and price, and then values. And then we're going to have one, two, three, four question marks. Oops. And then after that, we pass in the actual values that we want. Now that should go. There we go. Uh, the actual values will be ID, uh, candy dot category, candy dot name, candy dot price and then I'll bring this here dot execute and we want to do a if error actually and error not equal to nil um, let's log not print f oh shoot what did it what happened? Oh, print line log dot print line uh, error while trying to save to DB. Print that error there and then return an empty string and the error. If all looks good, return ID and nil for the error. Now for this ID, I am going to be using a the uh, UUID function package object <laughs> from Google. Um, so you can just do this. You call UUID dot new and then dot string to convert it to string. UUID dot new dot string. There we go. So now we're passing that in here whenever we insert uh, into our candies table. Okay, so now we can focus in on our uh, handler. Let's go and create our endpoint. Router.handle func. This will be just like the others, API slash candy. It's gonna take in add candy handler func. It's gonna take in an adding service. And it's only gonna accept the methods or the method post. And right now, 
uh, we don't have this adding service. So let's go and put this inside of the parameter before we forget. Adding service, adding dot service, auto imported. And now we have, we'll have access to this adding service inside of our add candy uh, handler function. And also, let's go into our main.go file. Go over here where we declared our reading service and do the exact same thing for our adding service. And don't forget to pass it in here along our init handlers func function <laughs> so that we can have that at our disposal up here. And last but not least, we will create our handle adding dot go file. And this will be a good old handler function called add candy it takes an adding service as a parameter. First off, <laughs> declare it as part of the rest package. And then now we can do adding dot service. And this is going to return HTTP writer uh, response writer. Response writer, and then uh, the request, request, return func, and then I'll copy this part here so I don't have to rewrite it. And now we can get to the logic. First thing, uh, declare a new variable called NC or new candy. And it's going to be of type adding.candy. Next, we're going to uh, deserialize or decode, um, not the writer, but the response body to this new object that we had. Decode to percent new candy and if error not equal to nil we're gonna want to do HTTP error takes in a writer a string and a status code we're gonna do HTTP status internal server error and for the string internal server error just because we don't want the user for um, security reasons to know what's going on behind the scenes don't forget to put this return statement either because it will continue um, so after we do that what we want to do is get the ID and another error from our new beautiful adding service and pass in this new candy object. Once we do that, we'll have access, if everything worked out fine, to this new ID. And what we want to do with this new ID is assign it to our new candy ID. Well, before we do that, we should probably check for the error error not equal to nil and the exact same thing I'll just copy here and down here we want to do new candy dot ID is equal to ID and last but not least what we want to do is pass in our delicious candy that was just created to our writer. This needs to be new encoder dot encode new candy. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that should be everything. Um, just to double check, 
before we do anything, make sure everything's out. Well, not everything. Uh, everything besides our two manually entered uh, rows. And now we are able to run. I don't know. I have three running. Should only be two. There we go. Run our application. Hopefully nothing fails and everything works out fine because we want to get to selling our candies. Allow our, our network access. And now what we want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is pass in this JSON object, make sure it's JSON, raw, body, and a post request to our new endpoint, API slash candy. When we hit this endpoint, we should see our new candy. And there we go. There's the, the ID that was created. And just to double check, let's go back to our, our terminal and select from our candies table. And as you can see, there is our new Snickers entry. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you like if you enjoyed the video. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Uh, as I said before, these videos are a lot of fun to make, and uh, I really appreciate every like and subscription and comment. Uh, I try to respond to every comment as often as I can, so make sure to comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see or if um, or if you have any questions. Just let me know. I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention within this project. Uh, I know it's been the holidays, so I, I, my uploading schedule has been a bit erratic. So I'll try to be better about that. But I hope you all enjoyed your time. I know I did. Uh, one last thing. I almost forgot. I need to tag this and upload it to GitHub. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, you can check out my GitHub. I have all the code in here inside of this candy shop uh, directory. And if you wanna follow along with the videos in sequential order, or you just wanna see what you know what's up and what, what I've been doing, um, you can check out the different versions of the code. So this video is part four to the series, I think, or part, I'm pretty sure it's part four. Yeah, part four, the last one was part three. So yeah, go ahead and check that out if you want. Um, it'll be tagged here as v4.0 and feel free to pull and add on to it, whatever. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.